Good morning, good morning, good morning. I greet you in the matchless, mighty, and the magnificent, and the marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, let us look to the Lord and invite him into this service today with our praise. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything, let everything, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, let us stand to our feet and give God some praise this morning. Come on now, let's praise him. Let's bring in our wandering minds and look to the Lord. Please remain standing for the invocation. Dear God, we come on another first Sunday ready to worship you. Lord, we come inviting your presence with us. Would you come on into your house? Inhabit every pew. Wrap your arm around every soul. Lead us in every aspect of this worship experience. Catch us by the hand and just lead us in the praise. Lead us in our worship. Lead us, Lord, as we celebrate you. So, Lord, we want to thank you on this Communion Sunday for all that you did on Calvary, all that you did for us. So just come on in, Lord, and have your own way. And we'll be mindful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. Let every heart say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as the music ensemble ministers to us in song. Thank you. 
let's bless the soul. Bless, bless the Lord with all of your soul. Ah, and thank God for our music ensemble this morning. Let's give God some praise for our music ensemble. Amen, amen. We have reached a point in our service where we will renew our covenant or recite our covenant. It can be found in your order of service. When you have found it, would you please stand? Let's prepare to read our church covenant. Let us read together the church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, and the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We are also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we move from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to call on Deacon Derek Plummer to come and lead us to the throne of grace. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Order my steps in your word. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order thy steps in your word. Father God, the father of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. We come this morning, Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts to lift up and praise your holy name. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done. You woke us up this morning, Father God, with the blood still running warm throughout our veins. And we thank you. We ask you, no, Father God, please forgive us of all of our sins. Bless the sinner man and the sinner woman. Come and see about their needs. Father God, I just ask you now 
for a special blessing for First Rising Mount Zion Baptist Church. We ask you to come and lift us up, Emily and Father. Father God, we just ask you to strengthen us day by day as we try to grow our river. Father God, you gave us a roof over our head. You gave us food on the table. You gave us a job and you gave us money in our pocket. And we are so grateful. We are thankful, Father God, for all that you have done. Father God, now I ask you, bless those who are sick at home. Bless those who are in the hospital. Cover them, Father God, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Father God, I just ask you, Heavenly Father, stretch forth your hands, your healing hands, Father God. Let them know that you're God and God alone. Let them know, Father God, that you sit high and you look low. You have all the power. And Father God, as we face this coming Tuesday, elections Tuesday, my Father, show us a favor like you did two years ago. Father God, we just ask you, all these blessings I ask you in your precious name we pray. Amen. Does everybody in here know that Jesus Christ is Lord? Does everybody in here know that at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord? Oh, let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Plummer, for that thoughtful prayer and uh, the music ensemble.
for that chant. And I'm going to call on Sister Brianna Carraway now to come and render the reading of our announcements. You'll share our announcements with us this morning and our return. And I'll welcome our guest on person on Zoom and or YouTube. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Good morning. Happy Communion Sunday. Good morning. I have the announcements for Sunday, November 6, 2022. An appeal went out last Tuesday to bring an offering today to help Evangelist Cecilia Grant, the daughter in law of Deacon Hogue, Hugh, and Sister Evan Ernestine Hogue, Hogue, to replace their church's furnace at the gate called Beautiful Church in Lenore, North Carolina. You may make your offering today in person, online, or you may mail it into the church. Let's show our generosity. The puzzles for the seniors November activity are available earlier than expected. Please see Ms. Sister Cobb for your puzzle. The youth, teens, and young adults Sunday school classes will meet virtually today at 12 p.m. The walking challenge will end on Monday, November 7th. 7th. Remember to call in your steps to the office. Plan to vote on Tuesday and encourage others to do the same. Democracy is on the line. Until further notice, the 11.30 a.m. prayer service and Bible study will meet in person, while the 7 p.m. prayer service and Bible study will be virtual only on Zoom and YouTube starting Wednesday, November 9th. On Thursday at 5.45 p.m., we will come together as a church via Zoom for 15 minutes to break our fasting with prayers together. Certain persons will be asked to lead us in prayer for the finances of the members, the finances of the church, and the finances of the community. Please plan to join in. Also on Thursday, we will hold our presidents and pastors meeting at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Bring your praise reports and prayer requests to the Telephone Corporate Prayer Line of Agreement on Saturday morning at 8.20 a.m. On Saturday, November 12th, we will gather ourselves at 12 p.m. at First Rising to go out into the community to pass out flyers for Officers Day, the Community Fair, the Missionary Society Anniversary, and if the opportunity presents itself to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This event is for everyone. On Sunday, November 13th, we will celebrate our officers on Officers Day. The 9.30 a.m. service will be the pre-anniversary service. There will be a BTU session at 12 p.m. and the grand celebration at 3 p.m. via Zoom. The theme is Call to Serve in a Changing World from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. The guest preacher for the 3 p.m. service will be the Reverend Dr. Harold Brooks, Jr. of the First Baptist Church in Southeast. Set your reminder on your phone to participate in a joyous occasion. Be on the lookout for details for Deaconess activities, the community fair on the 19th, and the Missionary Society anniversary celebration on the 20th. This concludes our announcements. Have a blessed week. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Brianna, for sharing our announcement. Now, where was I? The welcome. It is time to welcome our visitors, whether they're in person, whether they're on Zoom or YouTube. If we have any uh, visitors uh, that are in person, would you please stand and remain standing until you're formally welcomed? Seeing none, we're going to assume that they're visitors on Zoom and YouTube. And we just as a church, want to thank you for joining in with us in our service today. You could have pushed a button and joined in with anybody else, but you chose to spend time with us at First Rising this morning. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, a song will be sung, a smiling face, or, or 
something will be done to let you know that you've been in the presence of the Lord today. Um, so we thank you for your participation. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us. And if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a church home, we're going to give you the instructions at the end of service, how you can connect with First Rising. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. 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 And we want to welcome you with open arms. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our visitors this morning. It's offering time, church. Amen. Amen. It's time to give back to the Lord a portion of that which he has given us, especially in our stewardship month. Amen. Amen. We want to be the best stewards of those resources that the Lord has given us uh, uh, individually and also as a church. And there are going to be two offerings today. Um, the second one was announced earlier uh, for uh, Deacon Hogues and uh, Sister Ernestine Hogues, uh, daughter-in-law, Evangelist Grant. Remember last week I said that uh, their furnace went out uh, at their church and and I spoke with her on last night, and she's thanking God that it's not cold yet. Uh, so they have a little time to raise the funds, and we want to give a generous, want to give a generous offering, a generous donation to that cause. Amen. 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 I never can tell when we may need help. Who knows? Heaven forbid. But who knows? So we want to be a blessing unto them, and want to bless your church as well. So don't take away from your tithes and offering. And um, and if you're if you're online for because for the most part, we've already done ours in the church. Um, I uh, did mine on yesterday, as a matter of fact, online. And what I did is I, I went to www.firstrising.org. I went to that little link that says online giving. I went down to the bottom of the screen as a sentence that ends in the word donation. I clicked it and I'm already set up in there. So I just signed in and went to the tithes. And yesterday we had some speakers. So we went down to the bottom and other and put something in there as well. But today you'll go down to the bottom to other and put in, um, put in evangelist grant. Put in evangelist grant. Um, actually, should be made. Should make it to the church. Um, don't have the name of the church in front of me. But for for now, just put evangelist grant in there, and we'll see that they get that offering. And I'm gonna start off that offering with a hundred dollars. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we want to give a generous offering. I think the handful of people that just applauded to that $100 offering. And hopefully that means that their hands are on their way to their pocket or pocketbook. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we want to let those that are online, uh, we already did that. So let us, let us stand now. Let us stand now. Let's pray over our offering. What I do need to do is give the telephone number of the church, which is 202-289-4480. So if you can't see the screen or you need the information to mail in your offering, call 202-289-4480. Let us look to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your many, many benefits toward us. Thank you, Lord, for the time and talent and treasures that you bestowed upon us. And Lord, we come now being the best stewards that we can as individuals to give back some of those treasures unto you. And also we want to be a blessing to Evangelist Grant's church as well. We pray, Lord, that you would help them to raise those funds so that they can replace that old boiler that has gone out. So Lord, we ask that you bless the giver and the gift. Bless those that have the desire but not the means. And we pray, Lord, it'll be used for the continued outreach and outreach and just the uplifting and building of your kingdom down here on earth. 
So we thank you, Lord, for using us for your good. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. presence of the Lord unless you want to remain standing during our altar call. It is prayer time, church. It's time to look to the Lord and give him thanks, uh, to turn over your burdens unto him, to magnify him, make his supplications known. And before I start, I want to uh, let you know that Oh, about four, somewhere between four to six weeks ago, I was seeing a little shadow in my left eye. So I scheduled a doctor's appointment, um, eye doctor's appointment. It went on Thursday, and, and uh, they took images and did a lot of tests and had me to read charts and things of that nature and, and looked at the images, and, and the right eye looked fine. But the left eye, the left eye um, uh, had damage due to um, something going on with the blood vessels, either clogged or, or something wasn't quite right. Told me that the cause is usually high blood pressure or high cholesterol, of which I have neither. Um, and. So it's a puzzle to me as well as to them. And he said that um, it is hard to detect what the cause is. Um, and um, they told me to take uh, uh, B-complex vitamins and that they're going to give me some injections. Um, it's more or less like an antibiotic in that left eye. So Thursday, I went to the optometrist. They later scheduled me that day for the ophthalmologist. And on Friday, I went to see the retina specialist. And the retina specialist confirmed everything and said that um, she would schedule me for my first shot on Friday of this coming week. And I have to have another every four to six weeks and that will take away the inflammation, and it has a um, has a strong um, experience at restoring some of the some of the vision. Uh, I fail to tell you that uh, that week before last, the whole left eye went blurry. It wasn't partial as it was before. So the last two sermons and the last two Bible studies I prepared on with one eye. And I talked to one of our members a couple weeks ago. Uh, they called to let me know that they had uh, shots in their eyes um, and that it improved their sight. And I'm thinking it's the same thing, the same shot. So just wanted you to, to be aware don't be afraid, because I'm not afraid. Amen. I'm trusting in the Lord that he's going to restore whatever can be restored. Amen? Because he is a restoring type of God. Amen. Amen. So don't you worry. Don't you fret. And don't you frown. Because the Lord is in charge of this. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with that said, we have a pretty long prayer list today, and I want to share with you the 
continue to solicit your prayers for uh, Sister Molly Tillman, and Brother Robert White, and Sister and Brother of, uh, Reverend Roland White, who are having their medical challenges along with the two nieces who are having theirs as well. And also, Reverend White wants to pray for his wife and daughter, Deacon Doris White and Sister Roletta White, who was shaken up in a car accident. And also, Sister Mary Samuels, who has a terrible cough and she also wants us to lift up her granddaughter, Kylie, I think she pronounced it, who's not feeling well. And I want you to, if you will, to pray for Sister Young, who also has a terrible cough um, and a headache, and our granddaughter, Kari, who's not feeling well. I want to continue to pray for Reverend Claudius Jones and family in the passing of his first cousin, Doretha McCarter. The arrangements are incomplete at this time. Also, uh, the viewing and home going for Mr. William Williams, the uncle of Sister Gloria Williams, and, and also Sister Melvina Moore. It is Monday, November the 7th at the Stewart Funeral Home on 4001 Benning Road, Northeast. The viewing is at 1 p.m. and the service will begin at 2. The homegoing service for uh, Anitra Hawkins, the niece of Sister Gloria Williams and cousin of Sister Melvina Moore will be at the Temple of Praise on 7000 Southern Avenue in Southeast. Viewing will be at 10 a.m. Service will be at 11 on November the 10th, Thursday, November the 10th. Also, the homegoing service of my cousin, Herbert Boone, is also on Thursday, November the 10th. Uh, it will be at the Stewart's Funeral Home. The viewing will be at 1 o'clock, and the service will be at 2 and I will be doing the eulogy uh, for the family. Let us pray for all who are on our sick and shut-in list and all who are going through a period of bereavement. So pray for others first. Include them in your prayers. Pray that folks will get out and vote, as Deacon Plummer said. Our democracy is on the line. You can stand where you are. Humble yourself as you know how. And seek the Lord for his divine intervention. Take out a little space for yourself. And let your prayers and supplications be made known. Pray for comfort where there's a need for comfort. Encouragement where there's a need for encouragement. Healing where there's a need for healing. Relief from aches and pains. Let the Lord just meet us at our point of need.
Let us go to the Lord together. Lord God, we come recognizing that you are our helper and that we shall not fear. You are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So Lord, we just come today to give you, give you thanks. Thank you for life and giving it to us abundantly. For every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, we are broken over our sins. And we pray you'll forgive us and comfort us, Lord. We've done things that have not been pleasing in your sight, and we're sorry. Forgive us, Lord. Not only forgive us, but strengthen us also so that we can stay in that path of righteousness for your name's sake. Create in us a clean heart. O oh Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. At this time, Lord, we come to lay our burdens down. We're asking, Lord, that you would be with those who are lonely and brokenhearted. Not only that, Lord, we ask that you be with those who have recently admitted to the hospital. Be with those who are are going through their rehabilitation. Be with those, Lord, who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Be with those whose memories are fading, Lord. And all of us whose vision is not the same as it used to be. Lord, we're praying that the rate of that infection of that old coronavirus would decline. That we can truly have, have liberty within you. Lord, you given sight to the blind. You have allowed the lame to walk. You, you, you've even stopped the funeral, Lord, and brought folk back alive. You've even healed the sick and afflicted. And we're just, Lord, asking that you stop by here today and give, sick, give sight to the blind within, in us, within our ranks. We know you as a healer. We know you as a deliverer. We know you as a comforter. You are our all in all. So we just lay all of this at your feet today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that nothing will get in the way of completing your will. Bless our finances, Lord, so we can be a blessing to the church and be a blessing to this community. We pray, Lord, that you encourage folks to get out and vote to keep democracy intact. Lord, and be with our government. Again, let your spirit hover around those who make decisions on our behalf, who you've given authority over us. That your spirit will help them to do what's right for all people. To not be so stingy and, and greedy, but to, to give to others. Lord, we pray for your intervention again between Russia and Ukraine, we, we know that you're the Prince of Peace. So we'd ask that you bring peace over that senseless war. And Lord, we're concerned about the violence that's taking place in our, in our streets. Lord, help us, strengthen us that we can go out and, and it, make an impact on our community. 
do something with this gun violence, Lord? How is it that these folks are able to get guns? Whatever the source is, Lord, we pray that you will cut them off and stop these shootings and, and killings within our community and, and, and in other places. Lord, you said for all who are burdened and heavy laden to come to you and that you will give us rest. So Lord, we just want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Because we know you, Lord. We know what you've done before and we know that you can do it again. Our confidence is in you. Our faith is in you. You are our conqueror. You are our savior. You are our deliverer as well as our provider. So we come, Lord, with joy in our hearts. We come with hope in our hearts because you've been so good to us. So, Lord, we just pray now for all who may be under the sound of my voice and know you're not in the pardoning of their sin. We pray, Lord, that you would give them a holy boldness when we open the doors of the church, that either they'll come forward or come out on Zoom or YouTube, saying, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, when the final sands of our hourglasses trickle through, and time for us here is no more, we know you're going to prepare a place for us. So we want to Come and be in your presence throughout eternity and have that eternal joy. So, Lord, we just want to thank you today. Not only thank you for what you're going to do, but thank you for what you've already done. And thank you for what you're doing right now. Incline your ear unto us, O Lord, and grant us your peace. For as we said earlier, you are the Prince of Peace. So we're just going to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. Let every heart say amen. For tomorrow, for tomorrow, be my rock in a weary land, a shelter in time of storm. Oh, God is, God is, my everything. For tomorrow. He's, for tomorrow, he's a rock, he's a rock and a weary in man, a, weary land. a shelter in a time of storm. Oh, 
for tomorrow. He's a rock. He's a rock. In a weary land. A shelter in a time. Oh, he's a rock. He's a rock. In a weary land. land. A He's a doctor in a sick room. They say he's a lawyer in a courtroom. Hallelujah. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. He's a joy. In a time of sorrow, he'll be your hope. My hope for tomorrow. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My 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 everything. My everything. My everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, how I sing. Hallelujah. My everything. My everything. My everything. You'll be your joy. Your joy and sorrow. You'll be that hope. Hope for tomorrow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For one for the Father, and one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost, and the three and one, my everything, God is. Hallelujah. 
if you ever been through something. Hallelujah. If you ever been broke, busted, and disgusted. If you ever had any type of affliction in your body. If you were tore up from the floor up. If you had your back up against the wall. If you were at the end of your rope. And the Lord saw you through. Then you got a testimony. That God is your everything. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. in the sick room. Yes, Lord. Our all yeah. and all. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Let's give God some praise. Come on. Come on. Let's praise him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, musical ensemble for blessing us real good this morning. Amen. Amen. That's all right. You can go ahead and give me some praise. And there is a word from the Lord. We're going to deviate on purpose from our Christian commitment series to our stewardship series. And then we will go to our Advent series and get back to the Christian Commitment series in January. Would that be all right? Thank you for the handful of folks that say it was all right. Amen, amen. So there's a word from the Lord, and it can be found in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, Proverbs chapter 11, just two verses, verses 27 and 28, Proverbs chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and they read this way, he who earnestly seeks good finds favor but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. I wanna share with you this morning from the thought, giving and flourishing in God's economy. Giving 
and flourishing in God's economy. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this stewardship month, for you to teach us and show us how to be better stewards of our time, talent, and treasures, and especially those treasures, Lord. So we're praying, Lord, that your word will go forth and accomplish its intended purpose and not return unto you void. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name I pray, amen giving and flourishing in God's economy. As you know, this time of the year is when the leaves on the trees turn colors and begin to fall to the ground. Deacon Gilliard and Deacon Ford and myself were talking about how much work they are to get them out of your yard. Some time ago, I found out why leaves turn colors and fall to the ground. When the temperature change and it gets cold, the tree begins to protect itself. It protects its inner core and concentrates its resources in the core of the tree. Then it sends a signal to the leaves that they have to fend for themselves. The leaves don't have what they need to survive. So they begin to change colors and fall to the ground and die. Y'all still not feeling me. This is the way it is with some people in the world. Folk will become cold, draw their resources in to protect the core of society and send a message to those on the fringes you have to fend for yourselves. Those on the fringes often do what they can to survive until they slowly die financially. Then those on the core who, or in the core rather, who are controlling the resources, who are enriched at the expense of those on the fringe, call those on the fringe deadbeats and ask them, why don't they pull themselves up out of their situation when it appears to be by design to keep those on the fringes, on the fringes, so the core can become wealthier. Are you with me? This country's immigration policies, its racial issues, and the, 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 the who is last hired and first fired policy what one race is paid compared to another just seems to be a system to filter more to the wealthy, creating a shrinking middle class and growing a, a larger lower class that is struggling to make ends meet. Unfortunately, this thinking persists even in the church. It seems that some folk in the church close their hands to the poor yeah. because they're thinking, they're thinking is they are barely making it themselves. They don't think they have enough to help somebody else make it through. Ah, uh, the Lord sent me here to tell you, this is not the way it is in his economy. He wants you to extend your hand to the needy, and he, he promises to fill your hand again. If you don't believe me, ask the widow of Zarephath when the prophet Elijah came in need. And he asked for a cup of water. And when she started on the way, he said, uh, why, why are you on when you go bring me bring me a little morsel to eat and she said the man of god i i got a little flour in the 
in the, in the house and and a little little oil and I was about to I was gathering these sticks and all uh, out here in the yard so I could go in the house and and cook this little little bread for my son and myself and we were gonna die because we didn't have anything else to eat. So Elijah, so Elijah says uh, to go ahead and bring, go ahead and fix, do what you said you're going to do, but bring me a little, bring me a piece when you come. Bring me, bring me, that's right, bring me a little piece first. Quoting what he said, he said, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. The widow did as he said, and she was able to eat for many days, the the scripture says. Uh, Fear. Fear sets in sometimes when we don't have, but we got a Lord that says, do not fear. Fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. The woman trusted the word of God that came from the man of God, and it came to pass just like God said. It just goes to show you to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. This is an example of giving and flourishing. In Proverbs, we see a lot of comparison and contrast between the giving those givers and those that are greedy. Solomon, who was once the wisest of all, uses this method of comparison and contrast to help us understand the will of God when it comes to giving. When people come to Christ, they have their own notion of what uh, the expectation of the Father are, and, and it can be the same for folk who have been around a while. That is why it is important for a new member of the church to complete their new members classes. Am I right about it, Reverend Jones? And and, and continue to study the word of God, either in Bible study or Sunday school to, to enjoy the good rather than experience the wrath of God. In the preceding verses to our text, we have a contrast between generous and greedy people. You have those who are liberal with their giving compared to those who hoard their resources. The one who is generous is giving more than required and in actuality should be impoverished themselves. But instead, they have found favor with God and instead of running out of the resources, their resources are increasing. I heard Solomon say in Proverbs uh, 19, 17, he said, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. Ah, I should have stopped right there to give you an opportunity to shout. Does anybody know the world claims to be religious and to do things, but they do things that are contrary to God's word? So then, How does one flourish in God's economy? You asked a good question. It's right there in the text. Solomon says in verse 27, he who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. What is this verse trying to convey? The giver finds favor with God. They first seek means to search what that that first seek that that's in that scripture it means to search to search for something early in the morning in other words they rise up early in the morning to find people that they can help 
They will put some money in the console of their car in case they come across someone at a traffic light is, that needs some help. They, they, they set uh, in their budget, they set money in the side in their budget. Uh, and in addition to their tithes and offering to the church to help somebody in need. They put their antennas up when they hear someone that has needs. And their ears pick up. I was told you one time before, some time ago, that I was riding in the car. My mother was sitting in the passenger seat, and and uh, and I had the uh, phone on the on the in the in the console, and um, and talking to a friend of mine that played football with at UDC, and he was talking about how bad things were going for him. He couldn't he couldn't pay his rent, and 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 Miss Mom Bell over there said, "How much is it?" It perked her ears up. Yeah. A person has that giving spirit, it would have perked their ears up when they hear that somebody's in need. Yeah. We got, she has folks all around the city that owe her money now. Yeah. Ah, but she will, her ears will perk up because she's keeping her antennas up for those who are in need. Yeah. So this person is seeking good yeah. or goodwill and is demonstrating the compassion of God and understands he or she is going to be well, going to be well-liked because he's trying to be friend folk for God. Yeah. That's why he's helping those in need, uh -huh. to befriend them, yeah. to find favor with man and to find favor with God. Yeah. So it is not so with this other seeker that you saw in that verse. Uh -huh. He that seeks evil withholds from or takes advantage of the needy. Yeah. The same will come unto him, the scripture says. Yeah. If not in this life, but in the life to come. Yeah. My Bible tells me you reap what you sow. Yeah. If you sow plenty, you reap plenty. If you don't sow much, you won't reap much. Yeah. They will come under God's judgment. I wonder who I'm talking to today. On the contrary, Luke tells us in Acts chapter 2. He said, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. The early church gave of their financial resources to help those in need. They found favor with God and with one another, and the Lord added to the church daily. They were trying to earnestly give of themselves to be well liked by the people, to find favor and approval by them and by God. They are seeking the goodwill of others. Oh, in 1902, a Methodist minister by the name of uh, Reverend Edgar J. Helms collected used goods from wealthy Bostonians and hired people to repair these items and resold them to pay wages and to give some to the needy. His system was of donors, job seekers, shoppers, and helping the needy led to the opening of the first goodwill in 1973. And in all places, it was in South Carolina. So people with disabilities could attain greater independence. In 2021, the Goodwill had 4,245 locations. I just did some quick math, and I don't know how many employees. I was looking to see how many employees they had, and it didn't show me. So I, if, if they had 10 employees each, that would be 42,245 employees in the Goodwill. In 2018, the Goodwill took took in $6.1 billion in revenue and donated $5.7 billion. Come on, somebody. Uh, unlike 
I think it was uh, United Way when they had the 9-11 and they took in monies and they said that they weren't, they weren't going to give out a portion of it. And the reason being is because they wanted to put some others aside for other purposes. And it didn't go to those who were suffering as a result of those two airplane crashes. Oh, actually, it was more than that. So the Lord is trying to show us something right here. The goodwill industries seek the generosity of givers to create jobs for people, to find favor with the needy, and to find favor with God. What started with an individual ended up prospering an industry to help others. If and when the members of the church give to the needy, give to help with the needy, with the needy causes, they will be seeking the goodwill of the people they help and find favor with man and with God. Giving, I'm telling you, giving flourishes in God's economy. So how does one flourish in God's economy? I thought you'd never ask. Solomon says in verse 28, he who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like the foliage. That foliage is like the green on the, on the plant, the colors on the plant. He is saying, instead of knocking oneself out trying to gain wealth and hoarding it, Choose instead to glorify God with, with his wisdom, and he shall prosper you as he sees fit. Yeah. He, he, we know spiritual wisdom comes from who? Comes from God. And, and it is found in his word that he gives it to you liberally if you ask for it. Wisdom is connected to the word righteousness, which means having a right relationship with God. Matter of fact, Back in Jesus' day, it was called right wiseness. Uh, so it, re it has something to do with having a right relationship with God. So abiding by God's wisdom lets you find favor with God and gives you the understanding of the mind of God. On the other hand, on the other hand, comparison and contrast, wisdom from the world will teach you to look out for yourself and hang out with others that have the same thinking that you do. Remember when the church members were selling their possessions and brought them and put them at the apostles' feet up there in Acts? And Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold their property and decided they would hold back some for themselves and tell the apostles this was all. Peter asked Ananias, they didn't go in together, Ananias went in first and said, why did you lie on the Holy Spirit? And this text says that Ananias breathed his last breath. And then here comes Sapphira, Sapphira his wife, and she comes in not knowing what happened to her husband, and, and she upholds the lie. And she, like her husband, breathed her last breath. Evidently, they suffered loss because they withheld what they could have and should have given to the church to help those in need. They were only thinking of themselves and caught up. they got caught up in the ways of the world. Is there anyone here that knows that operating out of the wisdom of the world can break you? Come a little bit closer and let me talk to you. The this, this spiritually wise know they are made and shaped by the word of God. All that we are and all that we have comes from God. When we use our financial resources according to the word of God, it is a sign that you trust the Lord. That is like we were talking a minute ago about the widow woman from Zarephath who trusted the word of God and, and, and didn't die, but prospered with plenty to eat for she and her son? Yeah. Well, it's like verses 24 and 25 of this chapter that says, there is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, yeah. but it leads to poverty. 
The generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered. So if you want your resources to increase, it's no need. It's like having a picture, a picture here. If I had a pitcher right here and, and, and we filled it up with water, now the God, the God is not wasteful. He's not wasteful. If you don't do anything with that water, then he ain't going to pour it on it because all it's going to do is come out. So if you pour yours out, then the Lord will put some more in so that you can pour it out again for what he wants you, for his will, according to his word and according to his way. So let us scatter and increase the even the more because this is God's economy and he's, he's challenged us to give. Uh, Anonymous writes, a wealthy elder in a church used to quote uh, the phrase, you can't outgive God. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Taylor. His remark is reminiscent of another generous steward who, when asked if he was not in danger of going into poverty himself through multiple gifts, he was asked if he was in danger of running out of money because he's helping other people. His reply was, not at all. I'm trying to help somebody today. I shovel out and God shovels in. And he uses a bigger shovel than I do. And God started the shoveling first. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. The scriptures tell us, give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. So if you give, he will give it back to you. He will refill your pitcher. Abraham gave it all. Moses gave it all. The early church gave it all. And Jesus Christ gave it all on Calvary. He gave up his body. He gave up his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. He was the lamb that was slain for the sins of mankind. He died on that cross that they nailed him to. He died between two thieves. He died a criminal's death. They put him in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, somebody said the third day, he got up, he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. <laughs> ah, with the power over sin, with power over death, with power over the grave. He gave us all the spiritual blessings. He gave us his love. He gave us a right relationship. He gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us his wisdom. He gave us time. He gave us talents. He gave us treasures. So we want to thank the Lord. We want to thank you for the material blessings so we can be a blessing to somebody else. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us to your glory. Oh, I used to hear the children singing, my father is rich in houses and land. He holds the wealth of the world in his hands. Rubies and diamonds, silver and gold. I'm a child of God. Is anybody a child of God in here? Is anybody allowing the Lord to use you to his glory? For he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. He got the whole world in his hands. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. He will pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. Ah, we are seeking your favor, Lord. We are seeking the favor of man. 
to spread your goodwill. Plant us by the rivers of waters so we can bring forth our fruit in due season. Help us, Lord, to have evergreen leaves, <laughs> giving and flourishing in God's economy. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he do it for you? He's a good God. Is anybody going to help me celebrate him today? Somebody just say thank you. Somebody, you don't need to be prompted. Just go ahead and give him the glory. Because I'm going to praise him all by myself and sing and shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because God is my everything. <laughs> He is my everything. Is he your everything? Is he your everything? Then give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give him some thanks. Thank him for his love. Thank him for all his spiritual blessings. Thank him for his wisdom. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his Holy Spirit. Thank him, thank him, thank him, because he's been so good to us. Oh, I just can't stop thanking him for what he's already done. Thank him for what he's doing right now. Thank him for what he's going to do. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he do it for you? He's a good God, a mighty God, an everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Come on, let's give God a hand, praise. Let us stand all over the church, if you will. For it is time for us to extend an invitation to discipleship. We're going to open the doors of the church and extend an invitation to discipleship. But we're looking for members, but God is looking for disciples that will come and receive those benefits that the Lord has bestowed upon us. But I just want to let you know that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the word tells us that all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, in person, on Zoom, or on YouTube, who wants to come and connect with First Rise of Mount Zion Baptist Church as a candidate for baptism, Those in person, ask you to step out in the aisle, come down the aisle, give your hand to the deacon, and tell them that you want to be a candidate for baptism. If there are any in our midst who was once a member of a church and for one reason or another it's no longer convenient for you to attend, you can come by way of letter from a church of like faith or you can come based on your Christian experience or if you straight away from first rising you can come and renew your covenant we were studying in Bible study the other day how some try to clean up themselves on the inside and that evil spirit goes away. And then it comes back and it peeps in that person's heart and see everything all neat and tidy, clean and swept up. So it goes away and gets seven others, seven other evil spirits, 
And because that person didn't get another tenant to live in his heart, those evil spirits came back and that person was worse off than they were before. So you can't do this on your own. You got to come and invite Jesus in your heart so that he can help you clean up. So that he can ward off those evil spirits. So sin will no longer have dominion over you. So we've given four invitations. One to uh, candidates of baptism. One to come by letter. One to come on Christian experience. Or you can come and renew your covenant at first rising. So is there one? Is there one? ensemble just to pause for a moment so that we can give instructions to those that are online. Those of you that cannot see the screen, you can dial the number I gave earlier, which is 202-289-4480, and tell us which mode you would like to connect with First Rising. Again, it's 202 289 Excuse me, 289-4480. Those of you that can see the screen, you can see uh, our website. You can see the address of the church. But there's a link for you on that website that you can scroll down to and click that link that says church membership. And give us your contact information and, and we shall get back in touch with you. And if you are in need of a special prayer, you'd like to have a special prayer, either myself or another will call you and have a special prayer with you. There's a place on the website where you can put your contact information. So we're looking for those to respond so that they can give and flourish in God's economy. Brother Norlin, you can you can continue.
giving and flourishing in God's economy. Amen, amen. It is time for us to enter the Holy Communion portion of our service. And before we do, just want to share with you how it all came about. You know that God created the heavens and the earth and he created man and his, and his wife. Adam and Eve gave them instructions to eat of any tree in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they let old serpent creep up to them and they peel to their eyes, peel to their flesh appeal to their pride and make them think that they didn't need God. Eve took of the fruit and bit of it first and turned to her husband. He had to have been standing right there, so he was going along with the program. He said, take, eat, and he ate it. Oh, they went and they realized that they were naked, covered themselves up with animal skin and hid from God. And as a result, uh, God said, well, God, they told God they were naked. So who told you you were naked? So sin it entered to the world. Sin entered to the world and generation after generation after generation Somewhere in the passage of time, they started making animal sacrifices. God gave them a law. And it wasn't, it wasn't so much for uh, their righteousness and the right relationship with God. It was more so just to point out to them that what their sins are and that they are sinners. And they had to make animal sacrifices. Something had to, some blood had to be shed for the remission of sin. So this took place with generation after generation until Jesus Christ came on the scene. And Jesus went into the upper room with his disciples and he blessed some bread And he blessed them fruit of the fruit of the vine. And said that this was his blood and this was his body. And to do this as in remembrance of him. So that's why we do it in remembrance of him. Not only that, he washed his disciples' feet to show service to one another. Humble him, humbling himself. So Jesus was the lamb, figuratively speaking, that was slain for the sins of mankind, for your sins and mine. And it says when we partake of these elements, not to take it lightly, otherwise you bring, I'm gonna use the other word to start with the C instead of the one with the D condemnation to yourself. So don't take it lightly. Do this in remembrance of Jesus. Reverend White's going to come now and render the reading of the scripture.
our scripture reading in the preparing for the Passover is going to come from the Gospel of Luke, 22nd chapter, starting with the 7th verse through the 13th verse. And the word of the Lord reads, Then came the day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good men of the house, The master said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to reflect and to remember the sacrifice that you made for us. It is reminiscent, Lord, of of the Jewish people who were told to put to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood of on their above their doorpost. And that everyone inhabited there would would not die. So Lord, we come grateful for you sacrificing your body and sacrificing your blood so that we will not die, but have eternal life with you. So we come to celebrate you today, come to commemorate, to remember and reflect of what you did way back on Calvary's cross. So we thank you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you forgive us of all of our sins. If we've done anything that's contrary to your word, we ask that you please forgive us so that we not, do not partake of these elements in an unworthy manner. So thank you, thank you, thank you for another opportunity to celebrate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father God, we come thank you for another opportunity, Lord, in the year of 2022 to worship you. It's the 11th time. Mm -hmm. Lord, as we take a part in your supper, that as we eat this bread, that we will represent your body, that we will remember your dying on the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. For the sins of the whole world, mm -hmm. continue to keep us in your care. So bless and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, that we have come around this table, the Lord table, 11 times in this year, our Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for going on Calvary. How you hung. They pierce you inside and the blood comes screaming down. Mm -hmm. They're saving blood for you and me. Yeah. And we say, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. As we drink of this wine, our Heavenly Father, let us not forget how you suffer and you died and how you showed us the way to go and, and showed us the way to go that we might have a right to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. As in this, in that holy name we pray, let everyone say amen. Amen. Amen.
indicated by raising your hand. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. You may drink of the cup. Jesus and his disciples sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We won't go to the Mount of Olives, but we can certainly sing a hymn. Amen. Amen. Let us give God some praise. 
for allowing us to participate in this communion service. Amen, amen. And let's just do one good scoop and give everybody that participated in this program today some praise. Let's give a little hand, hand praise for them. Amen. So if all minds are clear, let's look to the Lord in prayer with our benediction. Yes, please stand. Lord God, we thank you once again for allowing us to remember what you did for us. Lord, that is the greatest thing that anybody could have ever done for anybody. And we thank you for the measure of faith that you've bestowed upon us to accept what you did for us. We're glad that sin no longer has dominion over us. Don't have to worry about the grave nor death. And just wait for the day that you return and come for your church. So we thank you, Lord. And now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious throne with exceeding great joy. Unto the all-wise God be all power and dominion, glory and honor, both now and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may go in peace. And be sure to drop the um, tithing.